Virginia, number 11, Richard Morgan. And a 6-1, and a sophomore from Spring Lake, New Jersey, number 22, John Crotty. At center, at 6-9, and a junior from Peekskill, New York, number 32, Brent Dayas. At 6-7, and a sophomore from Millmont Park, Pennsylvania, number 30, Matt Blunden. And at 6-5, and a freshman from Freeman, Virginia, number 20, Brian Stiff. Your head coach for the University of Virginia, Mr. Terry Holland. He's number 32 against Ala Abdel Nabi. And controlled by Stiff of Virginia. Richard Morgan, the bomber. Short on the first one, and Snyder comes down with it. That will not stop him from shooting. Great steal over there. London got a hand on it, and he gets the ball back to the offensive end of the court to John Crotty. Duke starts in the man-to-man, -man, but you can see with Virginia, as Morgan shoots again in this, is that Virginia is going to play very quickly. They get it into the offensive end, and they go. They used to call shooters like Richard Morgan a gunner. It doesn't matter whether they go in or not. You keep shooting them until they do. But he has become a more complete player. Smith, who is starting in place of Bricky for the second straight game. I think that's a move that helps Duke in terms of their outside shooting, Mike, but probably hurts them a little bit more on the defensive end. Abdel Nabi got away from Dabs. <laughs> Snyder goes full court against Crotty. Morgan guarded by Henderson. Good pass and a good setup for Blunden, who can't hit it. They battle on the boards, and Blunden will pick up the foul going for the offensive rebound. Virginia has done a tremendous job over this six-game winning streak on the boards, and that fellow right there, Matt Blunden, he is the backup quarterback on the football team at Virginia, and he has probably done the best job of anybody. He's really, he's had a couple of double-figure rebound games. There you get a look at Robert Brookie. He's not starting. You can expect to see him and see a lot of him. Crotty picks up Quinn Snyder, the point guard for the Blue Devils. Both teams starting in the man-to-man. -man. Smith, followed by Abdel Nabi. And he will be a key tonight. Crotty against the double team. 4 nothing Blue Devils. Dabs knocked away by Ferry. Want to go inside to Stith, and he is being held by John Smith. 
Brian, Brian Stith at six feet five. You get a look at John Smith right there, but Brian Stith at six feet five is a very impressive inside player. John Smith is going to be hard pressed to guard him in there, but Duke on defense, it seems that they're dropping way off Matt Blunden, giving him the outside shot. Notice Ferry's going to play off dabs a little bit as well. But Henderson will be right with Morgan. This is Crotty over Snyder. And a foul on the rebound. Another one will go against the Cavaliers once again. Blunden. There's Terry Holland in his 20th year overall, his 15th in Virginia, of course, coming off surgery when Dave Odom ran the ball club and a very emotional situation when he came back, Dan. When he got out of the hospital, it's a well-known story now, at least in these parts, he came and visited the team before he returned to coaching prior to the North Carolina game, and they haven't lost since the little pep talk he was able to give him, even though he didn't coach that game. Abdel Nabi tries to follow his own shot. The Cavaliers come out with it. Virginia has not scored in two and a half minutes. They're down four nothing. Crotty trying to go by Snyder. Great job by Ferry to help out. Crotty for three. And the Cavaliers can't buy one early. And Duke is doing a nice job limiting Virginia to those perimeter jumpers and then blocking them out. Virginia's had a lot of success on offensive board. What a pass by Ferry, but they can't convert. Henderson was the recipient of a beautiful one-hand bounce pass. Well, the thing that Phil Henderson does here, he passes the ball to Danny Ferry, and then he cuts to the basket. Lots of times you'll see guys who are great passers receive the ball, but their teammates don't cut anywhere, so there's no place to throw it. Great job by Henderson to pass and go. Ferry at 6'10", is the fourth all-time leading assist man in Duke history, and it's still a shutout with 16.51 to go in the first half. Very great position and scored against Curtis Williams, who's checked into Terry Holland's lineup. And this foul will go on Abdel Nabi a little bit off balance, and he pushed Williams. Mike, interestingly, Brett Dabb brings the ball inbounds for Virginia, throws it to John Crotty. Danny Ferry is guarding Dabbs on the defensive end of the court, and what Ferry does is ignores Dabbs until he gets up to the offensive end. Ferry is actually slowing down John Crotty by helping out with a double team. Very good move by Mike Krzyzewski. Bricky and Leitner come off the Duke bench. Virginia gets its first bucket. Number 24, number 22, John. Duke playing man to man on the underneath out of bounds. They got burned that time. Good cut by John Crotty. Crotty scored nearly three and a half minutes into the first half. Virginia stays into the man to man. This matchup, Williams against Ferry, is an important one. And Ferry wins that. You get the feeling he can score almost any time he wants to. But there's a reason for that. <laughs> Morgan tries another long-range shot. Ferry with a rebound. Outlet to Leitner. The big freshman gives it up. Virginia hasn't gotten any offensive rebounds yet. Henderson short on the jumper. But we've got a foul that will go against Duke underneath. Christian Leitner battling against Jeff Daniel, who's in the ball game for Virginia. Virginia will play an awful lot of people. Daniel in the game for Dabs. He was battling Leitner. It's been all Duke the first four minutes. We have a timeout on the court. Blue Devils eight, Cavalier. There's the Virginia bench and Terry Holland and his longtime assistants, some gentlemen who have been with him for seven years, and they have done a great job on the court and off the court. There's the graduation rate for both of these highly respected schools. Virginia, 85 points, which is excellent. Mike Krzyzewski and Duke, 100% in the last 14 years, which is absolutely incredible. Both these schools with a real commitment to actually having student athletes, having their people graduate. That's just a great job by both schools as well as both coaches. Daniel with a bad pass. Crotty, nice job to get it back from Snyder. Virginia been limited to the perimeter game so far. Morgan 0 for 4. Crotty 1 for 3. They got to get somebody else involved in the offense. Leitner did a good job of coming over double teaming and taking the free shot away from Crotty. Shot clock is at 16 seconds. Plenty of time left. Another good double team. Daniel. Crotty is three now for three. Big bucket. That was a good double team, but I'll tell you what, Jeff Daniel just laid Quinn Snyder out with a forearm, and that's why John Crotty was so open. Snyder was dazed and recovering. 
Karate has all five of Virginia's points. The scoreboard shows only four, however. We'll try to check that for you. It sure looked like a three-pointer. And that's what Terry Holland is saying plenty works right now, that it was beyond the three-point line. Jeff Daniel going to try to lay a body on Danny Ferry right here. Ferry, well, that's just an excellent cut. He gets the position first. Daniel cannot just push around like that. It's one on Daniel, the third team foul. Both teams now with three. Terry Holland is still trying to get the official's attention to tell him that there's only two points up on the scoreboard. Davis is in for Henderson. Here is Ferry just inside the three-point line. Abdel Nabi got a hand on it, and they will call the foul on Abdel Nabi. I think they're actually going to call the No, it is going to be on Abdel Nabi. I thought it was on Brian Davis. That's two fouls on Abdel Nabi now. Richard Morgan did a pretty good job blocking out Brian Davis, but there was nothing he can do at all that came over. Well, I think you were right. I thought the foul was on Davis, but I saw they were going to call it on Abdel Nabi. That's his second and 14 foul against Duke. Here's a foul away from the ball, and it will be holding. And that is going to be against Brian Davis. And he's hanging on to Richard Morgan. If you're going to hold on to somebody from Virginia, that's a good guy to pick. You'd prefer not to get caught, but you would certainly like to keep track of where Richard Morgan is at all times. He's 0 for 4. And he can get very hot very quickly. Well, you know the number of attempts will go up in a hurry. It's just whether he's hot or not. Dabs is back into the ball game. Mike, and the shots he has missed have not been bad shots. They have no. been open jump shots. They just haven't gone down. He's not really forcing anything to this point. Still 8-4, to four, so that last supposed three-point shot by John Crotty was credited as two. Tried to get it into Dabs, knocked away. Ferry on the run. It's a two-on-four fast break, and Ferry, for one of the few times, threw a pass maybe he shouldn't have. Well, he got away with that, and I think it's a break, but Virginia doing a great job running up the basketball court. Of course, the Cavaliers have had most of their success at home. Foul on Daniel for holding. Very closely called ball game so far. Number two on Jeff Daniel. Virginia now really with some foul problems. London with two personal fouls. Daniel with two personal fouls. Most of those coming against Danny Ferry. But he will tend to draw them. Both teams going to their bench quite a bit. Henderson is back in the ball game. And he'll work in the backcourt with Davis. Henderson to Ferry. Henderson three. A little two-man game, and he buried the three-point. Mike, that's what we were talking about before. Henderson passed the ball to Ferry and then went to a position where he could score. Morgan, nice feed to Stiff, and Stiff puts it in. His first two points, the freshman out of Freeman, Virginia, averaging more than 13 a game. Stiff does a great job pump faking inside to get himself loose. Daniel on Ferry, great spin move. Then he missed the shot. Dabs with a rebound. Head fake by Dab, penetrating move, picks up the foul. Virginia, led by John Crotty, really forced the ball up quickly into the offensive end that time. And when you do that, it really puts pressure on the defense. Dab can shoot the ball from there. John Smith has to respect that. A very, very good fake penetrates to the basket and draws the foul. Foul was on Bricky, the 16th foul against Duke. And Dan, I, I think it's interesting that you take a look at the Virginia front line. These are guys that fans across the country have not heard of, but these are Terry Holland's kind of players. You're absolutely Absolutely right. They're good athletes. They're also very intelligent basketball players. Dabs with a miss who get another, and they are tough. I would say that you have a couple of hard noses out there, <laughs> but you got a couple of hard noses out there from Duke, and even though Duke has won 13 in a row in this rivalry, as Dabs hits that one, these games many times are really bloodbaths in terms of physical play because both of these teams, characterized, I think, by their coaches, are very intense physical basketball squads. Full court pressure by Virginia. Snyder beats the pressure, and the officiating crew of Wards, Hausman, and Donato have called it close, maybe with that in mind. When Snyder from downtown, he has not shot that much this year, only averaging seven points a game, but his history shows he can fill it up. 
And it would really help the Duke cause if he could make that shot consistently. Crotty against Snyder. Beautiful bank shot. John Crotty can get you some offense, too. Not just a point guard. 14-9 to lead back to five. Kenny Turner did not block him out, and thus far in the game, Duke has done a great job on the boards, and one of Virginia's strength in their recent winning streak has been their board work. Brody against Snyder. Barry comes over to help out. Dan put it up, and Bricky came from nowhere to block it. Virginia doing an awful lot of standing around off the ball, Mike, and there's the third foul on Daniel. Daniel with three fouls with 12.42 to go in the half. As this ball goes inside, you notice the two Virginia players, Turner and Daniel, on the other side, standing watching. That allows Duke to come and help, and Bricky, who leads the Blue Devils in block shots, got that one. Nobody likes to come into Cameron Indoor Stadium to play, Dan, but I think Virginia may like it less than anybody. Virginia, I think, really feels like this place is cursed <laughs> down here. It is so far tonight, 16 to 9, with 12.42 to go. Curtis Williams comes into the ball game for Virginia. He's number 21. And Daniels with three personal fouls. Quinn Snyder for three. Short this time. Bricky with a follow. He's clobbered. And there again, Kenny Turner in the ball game for Brian Stiff does not block out Robert Bricky. Snyder with another long, long jump shot. And you see Robert Bricky, he's got great position inside. Turner has really got to find him and block him out. That's the kind of fundamental mistake that Virginia has not been making in this recent winning streak, and they can ill afford too many of those. Abdel Nabi out, Leitner back in for the Blue Devils. Bricky, the junior out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. This is the first free throw, and Duke, normally one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country, is hitting a very mediocre 65% as a team this year. At least two of their losses, Mike, can be directly attributed to the troubles that they've had from the free throw line. Smith will come in. Bricky comes out after hitting the free throw shot. 17-9, Duke. Mike, you mentioned that Virginia has done most of their recent damage at home, and that is true. The other thing they've done is most of their recent games they've been playing from in front, and so it'll be interesting to see how they react. They're only on the road, but from behind. Dabs way outside as they initiate the offense. Morgan, who has yet to score. Forced that one. The leaner won't go, and Leitner with a rebound. That really was the first one he forced, Mike, and that was obvious, but Virginia doing an awful lot of standing around thus far on offense. Barry, if he gets the one-on-one -on -one situation, he'll put it up. Just an outstanding player. He told us before the game his back feels a lot better, and that's bad news for everybody else. 19-9. Henderson's done a pretty good job on Morgan. Morgan lost it on the way up, and this time he is fouled by Henderson. That will be number one on the junior from University Park, Illinois. And Morgan will get to go to the free throw line where he has developed into an excellent shot. Kenny Turner is going to tip this ball right there back to Richard Morgan. I don't know that that was designed, but Turner, I think, was just trying to prevent the turnover, and something good happens for Virginia. Morgan made sure with the lean-in. Stiff comes back into the ball game and Turner will go out. Mike, Virginia really hasn't, you see Kenny Turner going to the bench there. Virginia really hasn't gotten a contribution from the bench so far today. Curtis Williams has, he has played well off the bench, but he has not scored. Jeff Daniel has done a real fine job off the bench for him, came in and got three fouls and had to go back out. If you're a basketball fan, I hope you got to see Richard Morgan's performance against North Carolina earlier this year. 39 points. He was spectacular. Hit eight three-point field goals and one of the great street shooting performances you'll ever see. I never saw anything like it. No. 19-10. He'll try to cut the lead to eight. And Morgan finally gets on the board with 11.48 to go in the half. We have a timeout. Duke continues to lead Virginia 19-11. So far in the basketball game, the Duke Blue Devils have really been able to slow the pace of the University of Virginia. And one way is by bringing Danny Ferry to help Quinn Snyder. You can notice Jeff Daniel just coming into your picture. Ferry playing off of him. 
trying to help double team John Crotty. Here's the play we've been talking about. John Crotty is going to take this jump shot very clearly behind the three point line. He's going to hit it. He was only credited with two points for that shot. And we'll just have to see in a game like this that one point could mean something as we get down to the end of the ball game. Full court pressure by Virginia. That was obviously a three. Snyder ahead of the pack got by Dabs and laid it in. I think he surprised Dabs a little bit. Dabs expected him to pass the ball. Nice job by Snyder. Barry coming out to help again. Stiff has to get rid of it. Finally does. They're isolating Crotty. Leitner back to help out. Bad pass and Smith with the interception. Duke has played some great help defense. Henderson. The Blue Devils playing like they were when they were number one. It's 23-11, and Virginia calls timeout. Duke dominating the board so far. Something of a surprise because Virginia has been much better than that this year. On rebounding, it's 11-4. Duke. And there's the field goal percentage. Morgan a cold night so far. Duke just doing a great job pressuring the basketball. Nice pass. Crotty got it inside and Curtis Williams puts it in. Good patience that time by Virginia. That's the first contribution off the Virginia bench. Williams a transfer played earlier at Boston University and then Allegheny Community College. Ferry. Nice pass to Lake. What great vision he had. Leitner creates that play. It's a great pass by Ferry, but when Ferry gets the ball, Leitner goes to the basket. We're going to get a foul now on Quinn Snyder. You can't have a great passer unless you use him, and that is go to the basket. Now watch Leitner. He's going to cut right there to the basket. His man, Brian Stith, went to double-team Danny Ferry, and when he did, Leitner recognizes and goes to the boards. Very, very fine play. 10.30 to go, first half of play. Foul starting to mount up in this ballgame. Both clubs have pretty good benches. Number 22. We'll have to see how the fouls mount up later. Mike, you talked about the rebounding. We've talked about Duke's defense. Duke making us look bad. We talked at the start of the game about how they couldn't really pressure the ball anymore, but they're doing some ball pressure that looks like the Duke of old. Crotty misses the front end of a one and one. Duke up by 12 with the ball. Perry being guarded by Dabs. Curtis Williams now picks up Perry on the switch. Smith forced it a little bit, got it anyway. Duke is really cooking, 27-13. There's Ferry again coming over to help out. He doesn't double-team. He just slows Crotty down enough that the Virginia transition game hasn't really been able to get in gear. Dabs wide open, hesitated, got it to stiff. Now Dabs has to recognize when Ferry's going to help Crotty, and Dabs has to do what the Duke players have been doing, and that is go to the basket. Offensive foul called on Crotty. And Christian Leitner was the guy who got in his way, and they love to take charges at Duke. John Crotty just puts his head down and just tries to get past Leitner. Leitner doing a good job. Crotty sticks that shoulder in there. You talked about Duke and the charges, Mike. They really emphasize that here at Duke. They give an award at the end of the year for charges taken. Always thought that was maniacal. <laughs> Henderson stepped on the baseline after a pass that somehow got between the legs of two defensive players right to Henderson. Virginia needs a bucket here. Virginia's really in trouble, Mike, unless they can settle down and get into the kind of a game that they would like to have. Stiff leans into one, can't get it. Ferry with another rebound. Virginia not getting anything on the offensive board. It's one and done for the Cavaliers. And Stith is one of the superb offensive rebounders around. He hasn't been close to one. Ferry. Great control. What a catch. And here he is again on defense. And Dabs is just standing out there. He's got to make himself available to give Crotty some kind of help. 29-13. Biggest lead of the game. They haven't been able to get the ball to Richard Morgan at all lately. And Henderson knocks it out of his hands again. 
Henderson doing a great job on defense. Virginia might want to try setting something up where Morgan can operate down inside, maybe coming off some picks, going through, coming to the corner. Here, Henderson, no screens or anything. He just does a great job over playing Richard Morgan. Henderson gets a great hand as he comes out of the ball game for a breather. Davis is back in the game, and he is on Morgan. Try to keep a fresh man on him as often as you can. And listen to the crowd. They love it. Dabs leans in. Double dribble. Double That's dribble. Ball. The thing that makes defense so great here is that they reward it. The coaches, your teammates, and the crowd. They understand the game. And their defense has taken Virginia right out of this basketball game. Virginia trailing by 16 points. London comes back in. Dabs is out. Duke on a streak hitting its last six shots. This is a game they know they have to win. Four losses in the conference. Virginia, North Carolina, and North Carolina State each have two. They try the lob to Bricky. Jerry goes back to Bricky. Got his own rebound. Another offensive rebound. Coach Terry Holland is up asking for the foul. Abdel Nabi, well, he got the foul, but not where and on whom he wanted it. That's three fouls now on Blunden, and Duke continues to get second opportunities on the offensive board. Virginia just not the same team tonight that they've been for the last couple of weeks. They call that last foul on Stith, make it his first. And here are the standings. The Cavaliers would move to the top with a win tonight. If they lose, North Carolina and North Carolina State are playing for sole possession of first place tomorrow night. Georgia Tech lingering with those three losses. And you see Duke with the four along with Clemson. Terry Holland up giving the officials an earful as Abdel Nabi goes to the line. Well, like most guys who've been around for a while, Coach Holland is adept at giving officials <laughs> earfuls. Abdel Nabi, 66.7% free throw shooter, has five points on the night. Duke can do no wrong, and the Blue Devils are up by 17. Virginia in danger of being blown out in the first half. When you're playing as well as Duke has been playing, you certainly hope you build up that kind of a lead. Abdel Nabi makes them both. The lead mounts to 18. There's Ferry again, just slowing John Crotty down, and I think that has really disrupted the Virginia game plan. Morgan around the screen for three. Look out. Mike, that's what we were talking about. Virginia gets him down on the blocks and moves him from side to side with those screens and gets him open. That's the first open opportunity he's had in a while. Snyder tries to answer. That's the first three-pointer he's missed tonight. Cavaliers trying to run. Crotty, tough try. And Bricky knocked it out of bounds. Get the idea that Virginia really wants to try to force the pace with Duke hitting such a high percentage of their shots. Virginia hasn't had the opportunity to get rebounds and get the fast break going. Not a good play by Crotty. A break for Virginia, they get it back. Morgan made one shot and Henderson is off the bench in the same motion. London picked up by Abdel Nabi. Dribble it on the sideline. Virginia really not handling the ball very well. They're fumbling it around. Dabs on the most recent turnover, a double dribble. That time, Blunden just drops it out of bounds. Field goal percentage so far. Duke with 22 attempts, hitting 59%. Virginia's made only six field goals in the first half. They're down by 15. Crotty all over Henderson. This is Davis, picked up by Morgan, who's become a pretty good defensive player. He used to go for steals all the time and be out of position. Henderson. Abdel Nabi kept it alive, but Morgan has a crotty wide open, and Morgan overthrew it. Blunden is the quarterback, should have thrown that one. I think it's a good idea by Richard Morgan. John Crotty released as soon as the ball was shot. Used to call that cherry picking. I don't know what they call it now. Virginia has turned the ball over six times in the first half. Very great pass to Bricky. I don't think the basket will count. And Lenny Wirtz waves it off. We've got the blocking foul. As Crotty tried to 
pick up the charge. Ricky throws the ball to Danny Ferry, and as Duke has been doing very much, this Ferry's going to catch the ball. Ricky's the one who threw him the pass. Stiff goes to double team. Ricky cuts to the basket. You just can't ask any more than that as a coach. And with a passer like Ferry, you do that, you're going to get it back and score. The basket is waved off. And Dan, you're right. If uh, the player's out there cutting all night and never gets the ball back, all once he stops cutting, Absolutely. when he gets the ball back, he'll keep it up forever. Crotty has picked up his second. Ricky gets the first. He'll get another crack at it. Only shooting 56% from the free throw line this year. Neither Crotty nor Morgan have been out of the game for a rest, Mike. They both play about 35 minutes a game. Can't afford to rest them right now. Absolutely not. And Crotty also cannot afford to get that third personal foul. There's Danny Ferry again helping out Quinn Snyder. And Blunden just now jogging into the picture. He's got to recognize that. Crotty to Morgan, dumps it off. And Ryan Stiff, Stiff excuse me. When Blunden sees that, he has got to just explode down the court. By jogging up the court, he gives Ferry the leeway to do that. That has really hurt Virginia. Stiff has four. John Smith from downtown. 36-18. Here's Blunden again, jogging up the court, allowing Ferry to slow down John Crotty. Stiff looks inside, got it to Williams. He's short, Bricky with a rebound. Nice job by Bricky. Blocked out Stiff and went strong to the boards. 5.54 to go first half of play. Kicked out of bounds by Williams. Abdel Nabi will come back in for Duke. Ferry will get a rest. Listen to the hand for Ferry. Comes out with eight points, but his offense, his offense is hardly the greatest part of his game. He's a complete player. Crotty now comes out for that breather. He won't be out long. Anthony Oliver on the court for Virginia. Henderson, tough shot. He did a great job, Mike, getting himself square to the basket. Morgan in pretty good defensive position, though. 38-18. Stiff against Bricky. Nice pass to Blunden. Forced it up and got it in front of Abdel Nabi. The first two from Matt Blunden. Good power move by Blunden. And not only has Duke done a good job shutting off Richard Morgan, they've been very effective shutting off Brian Stiff as well. Loose ball, Blunden comes out with it. Morgan gave it up to Williams, and Williams is fouled. In past years, I don't think you'd have seen Richard Morgan give up the ball. I think that's really true, Mike, and that was just an excellent pass. He feels the pressure coming. Virginia, you can see how much they really want to get out. There's Blunden, the quarterback, with that pass over the middle. Williams running the court very well. Henderson commits the foul. Perry comes back in the ball game, and Curtis Williams will go to the free throw line. Virginia's got to think now in these last five minutes and nine seconds in the first half about working very hard to get that lead down to a workable margin. If they could get within 10 or 12 by halftime after trailing by as much as 20 in the first half, then they would be in pretty good shape. Down by 12 with Richard Morgan, you've got a shot. Virginia not doing a good job taking advantage of the opportunities that present themselves. Crotty just a few moments ago missed the front end of a one-and-one, and, one, and now Williams misses another. This, of course, two-shot foul. One out of two. Number and Dabbs will come back in the ball game. Dabbs has not been a factor either for, for Virginia. They've done a great job controlling the entire front line. Virginia's gotten contributions from so many different people during this winning streak, and Duke has closed all those contributions out. This is just a very fine effort by the Duke Blue Devils on the defensive end of the court. Maybe they turned the corner at Notre Dame this past weekend. Perry. Just an unbelievable touch. Danny Ferry has 10. The lead is back to 19. Talk about somebody using the pivot to get themselves set, Mike. Ferry just does a great job. Against pressure, nice move to get free, then he missed it. Bricky would have been spectacular if he could have come down with it. Oliver 
Butler has Morgan open, wants to take it himself. Ferry with another rebound. Knocked away this time. Dabs has it. Morgan wants the ball. And that's why. Way off on a 30-footer. Stiff with a follow. We told you he's a great offensive rebound. Well, Richard Morgan was closer to midcourt than he was the free throw line on that last one. That's definitely from four or five point range. Not a good shot by Morgan, but Stiff right there for the rebound. Mike Krzyzewski, I think, fought Stiff charge. 40-23. Abdel Nabi tried the touch pass going right back to Bricky and misfired on it. 3.43 to go in the half. Duke by 17. Number 33. Circled on your screen, number 35 in white, Danny Ferry, and in the background, Matt Blunden. Ferry guarding Blunden in the man-to-man -man situation. But as Blunden throws the ball into Crotty and jogs up the court, you can see Danny Ferry putting pressure on Crotty, not allowing Crotty to get in the position he wants to. Blunden simply jogs up the court and then stands out at the top of the key. Ferry with that double team, there's nothing that Crotty can do. Blunden absolutely useless in that situation. When you play five on four, you don't lose very off. Absolutely, and Duke, the 17-point lead, is demonstrating that point very well. Coming up at halftime, back to the studio with Tim Brando, all the top 20 scores and highlights, and then we'll come back to Durham, and Dan will have his first half analysis. Then it'll have something to do with rebounding and Richard Morgan's cold streak, too. 40-23, Blue Devils on top, 3.41 to go in the half. Ricky foul as he goes up. He's fouled by Oliver, Richard Morgan, getting his first rest of the half. Ricky taking it hard to the basket right past all of us. And they will send Ricky to the line. See if they give him two shots or a one and one. It looked like he was trying to pass the ball off. But may have talked his way into two. Gets the bounce. We talked about Virginia getting a lot of contributions from their bench and we also talked about Duke needing some contributions from people other than Ferry. You can see there Robert Bricky. He came off the bench. He missed that one, but he's got six points in the game today. Shooting better than his normal average from the free throw line. Four out of six tonight. London working on Leitner. Smith and he kicked the ball. Mike, that was a perfect illustration of the difference offensively between Duke and Virginia in this ball game. The ball goes inside to Blunden. He's turning and looking for someone to pass to, and Kenny Turner is standing at the top of the key rather than going someplace to get in position. Richard Morgan comes back into the ball game. Terry Holland doesn't want to rest him too long. That's a great job by Snyder. That is just a tremendous job by Quinn Snyder. First he denied it, then he stole it. And he is fouled by Crotty, and what a silly foul by John Crotty. He let him go all the way in, didn't try to block the shot, then got underneath him and bumped him a little bit. And that's three on Crotty. That's a bad play for a lot of reasons, yep. Mike, and the worst is that it's now three fouls on John Crotty. You're right. If you're going to go after Quinn Snyder, you've got to keep him from getting the ball up on the board. Crotty, as you said, he's he stopped. Now he just leans into him. You've got to get out of there. If you're going to go get the guy, then go get him. But if not, just completely get out of the way. You get trouble being a spectator. Snyder short on trying to make it a three-point play. It's 43-23. Duke matching his biggest lead of the game. 3.09 to go in the half. Morgan now being guarded by Bricky. Dabs offensive rebound, put it up a little strong. Nice play to get it back by Richard Morgan. London will try. Follow tip, and it's good, and the foul on Ferry. Nice job by Kenny Turner. Virginia doing for the first time in this ball game a real workmanlike effort on the offensive boards. You can see Dabbs coming out of there with the ball. He misses the shot. The ball is tipped up again. Now Richard Morgan is going to get to it and tip it back to Matt Blunden. That's really ahead of play. Blunden with a wide open shot. He can't make it either. But Kenny Turner coming in very hard. Nice job by the Cavaliers to stay with it. Three-point play, 
Virginia, who has been struggling on the offensive end, hasn't played well on the defensive end either. And if you're going to come back in a game like this, you've got to do it by creating some easy opportunities on the defensive end. Duke's getting just two good shots. They're just two easy opportunities. Perry being guarded by Dabbs, working real hard. They tried to get him the ball. Here comes Virginia with the turnover. They look for Morgan and find him. He goes into Dabbs. Good fake. Shot won't go for him. And the foul is going to go on Turner, battling for the extra rebound. That's number two on Kenny Turner. Virginia got exactly what they wanted, Mike. They got the turnover on the defensive end. They ran the ball up the court, and in the transition, they got an easy shot inside by Dabbs. He just didn't get it to go down. Dabbs was a first-team junior college All-American. He's had a peak skill in New York. Terry Holland and Craig Littlepage, assistant coach. First team, junior college All-American, and more, more and more outstanding programs like Virginia are going the junior college route to fill holes. Not only that, to find starters, Dan. As the recruiting gets more and more intense with high school players, and with Proposition 48 sending more and more kids to the junior college ranks, that's sort of a fertile ground. Leitner hits them both. 45-26, the lead back to 19. Oliver running the club. Crotty on the bench with three fouls. And here is a foul called against John Smith. His second. You don't really want to commit a foul like that. Smith is, Smith is guarding a man, in this particular case, Kenny Turner, who has his back to the basket and is at least 35 feet from the basket. And even with a 19-point lead, you don't want to give your opposition any easy opportunity. Greg Kubek makes his first appearance. Outstanding shooter who has struggled this year. Shooting less than 40% from the floor and from the three-point line. Only been three of 22. He is a much better shooter than that. Turner, one of the better free throw shooters for Virginia on a good free throw shooting club. 78%. You see both of his attempts come out. Number 20. Terry Holland will send Bryant Stiff back in the ballgame. And London will come out. Virginia now playing with a relatively small lineup. Turner at about 6'6", Stiff at about 6'5". And here's Ferry helping out with the press, which he does so well. Thought he hopped a little bit right there. May have gotten away with one. Superstars tend to get away with one every now and then. And he is that. Dabs working real hard inside against Ferry. One of the few times tonight Ferry has come outside, and then he goes back in. Dabs knocked that one away. Second straight turnover when they try to get the ball inside to Ferry. Morgan, nice pass, and the foul will be on Kubek. Virginia really trying to pick up the tempo on the defensive end of the court, and you can note when they get turnovers, they're able to get in the transition game that they like. Here, Dabbs is going to come over the back, and lots of times that's called a foul, but Dabbs with that long reach is able to get around without fouling. Now Virginia really has Duke at a disadvantage. Morgan recognizing very well the wide-open Kenny Turner. Come on, Turner hits another one. And Virginia slowly, they're still down 16 points. But that's as close as they've been in a while. Absolutely. 145 to go in the half. Turner with six off the bench. Average is only 5.3. But that's because of the rotation that Terry Holland is used. Plays a lot of guys up front. Virginia continues with that pressure. Sort of a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one zone defense. Barry gets it to Laker now to Quinn Steiner. Virginia drops back in the man-to-man. Ricky really looking to post up Morgan inside. Go back to Bricky. Three for the shot. Won't take it. Stiff is, or Dabbs is really pushing on Ferry. And the last two times he got away coming over the back. That time he got called for it. It's only one on Brent Dabbs. Virginia number three. And Ferry will go to the line where he's a little off this year, hitting 72%. Now, Dabbs is not usually asked to play a guy like Ferry. Usually that's Blunden or Williams or Daniels, but they're all in foul trouble. Mm -hmm. 
And so Dabbs working pretty hard, but as we said, he got caught coming over the back that time. As a sophomore, Danny Ferry was the number one free throw shooter in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Among the other things that they've done very well this evening, shooting free throws ranks right in there. You bet. Ferry makes them both. Virginia coaches, we said they thought this place was cursed, and they certainly have every reason to think that. 47-30, a minute 13 to go in the half. Morgan had it knocked away. There's the foul call. This one on Bricky. That will be two on Bricky. Now what Oliver did was take the ball over in front of the press table with his back to the basket and pick up his dribble. And against a team like Duke, that is not a very good idea. Very little else he could do wrong in that sequence. But it turns out well for the Cavaliers because Morgan will go to the line. Morgan saves that play by doing a great job going to the basketball. He went to help his teammate, went strong to the ball, and drew the foul. During this six-game winning streak, Morgan is averaging 26 points a game. He has had at least 20 in every one of them. And in each one of those games, he's had a streak where he's rattled off three or four rather incredible shots from various angles in a row, and Duke has simply kept that kind of a run from occurring. Well, he hasn't shown it yet tonight, but when he is hot, there is not a better shooter in the entire country than Richard Morgan. Remember, at halftime, we'll be going back to our studio, top 20 scores and highlights from Tim Brando, and then we'll be back to Durham, and Dan Bonner will tell you about what happened here in the first half. 102 to go in the half, a 15-point game. Duke has been up by as many as 20. Laker got free, they got him the ball. In the Morgan back the other way, trying to get by Bricky. Dabs for three. And Duke can play for the last shot. That's really not the kind of shot Virginia wanted in that situation. You don't want your center out there shooting it from three-point range. Dabs is two for ten beyond that line this year. Not your leading candidate to take it. Ferry will hold it as long as they'll let him. Tough matchup for Dabs trying to guard Ferry out there. It's hard inside, but it's even harder out there. Duke playing for the last shot. That is the game clock you see. The shot clock is off. Ricky walks with six seconds. It'll be interesting to see what Virginia can get in this particular situation. You know Duke is going to try to find somebody and get him draped all over Richard Morgan. Right now, that's Bricky down at the other end of the court. Here comes Oliver. Got it to Morgan. A prayer and banks it off the glass. The streak. Crotty and Stiff have six. And there you see potential foul trouble. Crotty already with three. For Duke, Danny Ferry, the leader, with 12. Three players on your screen, Henderson, Abdel Nabi, and Bricky, all with two personal fouls. And I think before this one is over, the foul situation will really be a big factor in this ballgame. Mike, one of our keys was that Ferry had to get some help from his friends, and he has gotten that. Robert Bricky with coming off the bench with not only those points that you saw up there, but seven rebounds. Leitner with six points. Abdel Nabi with six points. Duke just hit on all cylinders in the first half. Blue Devils ball as we start the final 20 minutes. Ferry into Abdel Nabi under pressure, and he scores. Roddy gave up on the defensive end, not wanting to pick up his fourth personal foul. Wide open, Blunden. There's Blunden. Ferry's guarding him. Ferry went to double team. Blunden went down to the low blocks, and he got the ball. You think that was a major topic of conversation in the locker room? <laughs> well, there's that possibility. 51-34. Del Nabi works out of the double team. Tipped out of bounds by Crotty. Ferry continues to do what he did in the first half, and that is try to bother John Crotty, bringing the ball up the court. You see Blunden. There's Ferry out at the top of the key. Blunden is his guy, and Blunden goes to the basket and gets the score. John Smith with some good defensive hustle almost created a turnover. And as you pointed out earlier, Dan, Duke has shot the ball so well, Virginia has never had the opportunity to get the running game going. See Ferry, he's not watching Blunden right at the moment. Now, Blunden to have the ball. Ferry's got to come and get it. Morgan, nice pass inside the stiff against John Smith. Missed it. Foul 
on Abdel Nabi. That's his third. That was real good defense by John Smith. Stith does a nice job catching the ball inside, but Smith just holds his position and forces that miss. Stith is trapped there under the basket. Smith does a nice job that could almost be called an offensive foul right there. Probably a very good no call. But Smith, you know, the tendency is to lean in in that situation and pick up the foul. That's good defense. Morgan leans into one and hit it. And just because they've kept him under wraps for the entire first half doesn't mean that he can't explode at any point. He can still get 35. Morgan goes for the steal. And he'll get the jam, a little showboat, 51-38. This is as close as the Cavaliers have been since early in the first half. They've closed it to 13 at 51-38. Obviously, one of the adjustments made at halftime by Virginia is to get Richard Morgan open. There's a screen by Stith. Morgan penetrates to the basket, and when he gets going, he can really be exciting. His game has a lot to do with confidence. But here he is going to play defense. That's just a great tap away right there. He's going to take it all the way down himself. He's now got two baskets in the second half, and his game, as we said, has a lot to do with, as most shooters, feeling it. And if he starts feeling it, Duke could really have a problem. Morgan was only one out of nine in the first half, two out of two to start the second half. One of the problems for Virginia, you get so far behind the team with this guy right here. He missed that one, but they can just go to Ferry time and time again. Dab's got it out to Crotty, who lost it. Here comes Quinn Snyder back the other way. alley for Brick. He couldn't control it. Not a good play by Quinn Snyder, and Mike Krzyzewski is up telling his team right that there, right there. I don't think that Duke, even at this point in the game, wants to get into a match running up and down with Virginia. That was not a good pass by Quinn Snyder, and probably not a good decision to even throw the ball. Snyder very rarely turns the ball over. 125 assists this year, only 49 turnovers. Crotty all the way, and he missed it. Great drive, couldn't finish it off. Blue Devils forced him to shoot that ball on the run with his right hand. Barry got away from Dabbs, jump hook, forget it. Virginia had the opportunity right there. They miss a layup that could have cut the lead to 11. And now Barry answers for Duke. Danny Barry, the leading scorer in the ACC, had 14 bad pass. And they're saying it was tipped by Duke. It sure didn't look like it, or tipped by Virginia. And Danny Ferry goes to appeal. Danny Ferry certainly does not think that Duke tipped that ball. I don't think anybody, maybe one or two people, think they did. Now, Mike Krzyzewski is saying since the officials really didn't see it, then it ought to be a held ball situation. But Paul Hausman felt he saw the play. Uh -oh. Morgan against a double team, a fallaway turnaround jump shot. Hot or not, that is not a good one. And it's done so quickly that his teammates don't really have time to get in so any sort of offensive rebounding position. Henderson, great move. He couldn't score. Bricky over Dabs. Ferry. Three cracks, no points. That's a big break for Virginia. Crotty wants to push it up. Bricky, what a play. Crotty gets it back. Morgan for three. Boy, a lot of intensity, but no hoops for a while. That could have cut the lead to 12. That was a big miss by Virginia. Perry wants the ball. Three-pointer. That's a great job by Brian Davis right there. That's just a tremendous job. When we talk about defensive, when we talk about offensive rebounding position, you don't necessarily have to be in front of somebody. As Davis showed you right there, he pinned Brian Stith, held him very effectively without fouling, and then was able to get the ball and draw the foul. Second foul on Stith. First team foul against Virginia's second half. Barry leans into one, got the bucket, Dams wanted the charge. Barry has 16, and it's 55-38. Duke back out to 17. And this will be a holding foul on Davis. Duke can just keep going inside. That's just a great job by Ferry right there. What good position. Dabs is just completely overmatched inside. shooting foul. Morgan will inbound. 16-23 to go in the game. Mike Patrick along with Dan Bonner. Glad you could join us from Durham, North Carolina. London, wide open. Scores. 
Barry sort of stumbled. I think London was very surprised that he was so wide open. Turned around, didn't see number 35 in his face. Davis, Snyder, Henderson, Barry, and Bricky on the court for Mike Krzyzewski. Watching Barry work for offensive position inside is like watching an artist at the canvas. He really does a nice job. Snyder comes up with a loose ball. Duke with plenty of time, 17 on the shot clock. Virginia really trying to pick up the defensive intensity. Crowdy knocked that one out of bounds. Tomorrow night, more great basketball as John Smith checks into the game. Number three, Missouri. Number five, Oklahoma. We start with the Big Eight at 7 o'clock, then at 9. North Carolina, North Carolina State, two top 20 teams. And BYU and San Diego State starting at 11.30 Eastern. The problem for Virginia, if you're trying to pick up the defensive intensity and trying to deny, you got a guy inside like Ferry who moves so effectively without the basketball that he's really been the outlet. Shot clock is at 12 as Duke inbound. Three at the baseline. John Smith with seven. Stiff had it stripped by Quinn Snyder. Mike, we talked in the first half about how the Blue Devil players were throwing the ball to Ferry and cutting through. That time, Oliver just stood at the top of the key and allowed Snyder to drop down and double team. Morgan off balance tries a three-pointer. There's a foul away from the ball. It's going to be on Ricky, his third. An off balance three-pointer by Morgan that time. You see John Smith there slapping the floor defensively. That's what the Duke players do. As you can see the replay, it just sort of ripples through. That's what they do. They get down in the stance and smack the floor. And the fans know exactly what it means. Bricky out of the ballgame with 15.08 to go. Basically what it means if you're on offense, you better buckle up. <laughs> Here's another steal. Virginia gets it back. Loose ball situation. Call the jump ball. Abdel Nabi a little upset as he and Dabs went down to the floor. Possession arrow will give it to Virginia. It's a couple of times this evening that Dabs on the outside has had a difficult time handling the ball. Stiff will inbound. Crotty held as he went down the lane. It's Quinn Snyder. Two on Quinn Snyder, the senior from Mercer Island, Washington. Nice play by Crotty to force that foul on Quinn Snyder. Really blew by Snyder. That is the fourth team foul called against Duke. Crotty for three. 59-43, and John Crotty with his first field goal of the second half. He has nine points. It does not help Virginia or anybody when you're down by 17 points at halftime to trade baskets. They've got to get some defensive pressure. They don't get it there. Great pass by Ferry. Ferry with another assist. Abdel Nabi has 10. Crotty had the three-pointer, passed on it. Another jump ball situation. This one will go to Duke. This is just the way the Blue Devils looked before they had North Carolina that started that losing streak. Playing with intensity, excellent defense, hitting their shots, rebounding well. A lot of that has to do with confidence, Mike. Mm -hmm. Danny Ferry gets hurt, and even though he plays against North Carolina, he plays against Wake Forest, he's still not playing up to par. The team just loses some confidence. That game against Notre Dame really did a world of good for the Duke Blue Devils. I don't think it helped the Irish very much, but Duke is certainly appreciative. Ferry misses this one, tipped outside. Crotty hustling after it. Quinn Snyder back. The foul, and Crotty did a nice job to get the ball up in the air and try to make it. Crotty creates that play by simply being very, very aggressive. Oh, no, Snyder was in pretty good position, but Crotty just takes the ball and blows by him. Wonder if John Crotty has a lot of speed. Right there, he showed you he's got a little more than Quinn Snyder. Snyder picks up his third. He has to come out of the ball game. Fouls continue to mount for both ball clubs. And Crotty will go to the line. Missed his only opportunity in the first half. Well, 
for Virginia, you're now in a situation with 14 minutes and 7 seconds left in this ball game and down 17, where basically you're going to have to capitalize on every single opportunity. Free throw short. They go for the offensive rebound. Jeff Daniel grabbed it away. And here's one of those opportunities that you mentioned. Morgan wants the ball. And they're not able to cash in. Pretty good defense by Duke. Excuse me, it was Kenny Turner, not Morgan, that was calling for it. Got it and lost it. Henderson just on the three-point line. He buried it. John Smith with the screen. Turner did not do a good job helping out against the defense. Blunden. Nice patience to get the shot up. 63-46. And the teams continue to trade baskets. We're right where we were at halftime. Duke with the 17-point lead. Smith, tough pass that time. And Blunden called for holding Danny Ferry. Nice job by Oliver to get in and slap the ball away, but Ferry doing such a great job. Watch, he just explodes across the lane. Now Blunden's in trouble right from the start. Ferry pins him on his back. That's really a good play. Oliver almost coming up with the turnover, but Blunden was on the defensive from the first moment that Ferry came down the court. Wouldn't you be? Uh, it's much better up here. You don't have to deal with that kind of thing. 13-10 to go in the game. Ferry again, a nice pass to the cutting Robert Bricky. Oliver turned around to cover down on Ferry. Bricky explodes to the basket. Virginia, when, you have a, when you're trying to defend against a passer like Ferry, you're really in trouble if, the team, if his teammates are going to move as well as Duke has done all night. Tremendous scoring balance tonight for the Blue Devils. Turner forces one up, and Bricky skies a rebound. Ten rebounds for Robert Bricky. You just get the feeling that Duke may be on the verge of a big run here to put this one out of reach. Already up by 19 with 12 and a half minutes left. One could argue that it already is out of reach. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go that far. <laughs> but they're working on it. Excellent ball movement. Ferry to Henderson lost it on the way in. Duke gets a break because the whistle blows, and there's a foul. And the fouls, I believe, on John Crotty. Yes, it is, and that's four fouls on John Crotty. Crotty says he doesn't want to come out of the ball game. Four personals with 12-17 left. Terry Holland's going to leave him in. Coming up Saturday on ESPN, starting at 1.30, Maryland against the St. Duke Blue Devil team. St. John's in Syracuse. Then at 9 o'clock, Eastern Xavier in Wichita State. And we'll cap it off at 11.30 with Murray State and Middle Tennessee. And now Crotty is coming out of the ballgame with those four personals. Their floor leader and a big scorer tonight. He has 10 points, only one of two men in double figures. Morgan is back in, and they will need the streak shooter to get high. Virginia with not a real good ball handling team in the game right now. Morgan basically in at the point guard slot. Ferry. Soft touch on the turnaround jumper. Danny Ferry has 18. And it's 67 46. That is the biggest lead of the game. Morgan just inside the three point line. Won't go. Knocked out of bounds off of Duke. Number 10. Oliver checks back in the ball game, and he won't have a chance. There's a timeout on the court. 11.41 to go. You know, Danny Ferry is so good, it's frightening. Not only does he have all the athletic skills you'd ever want, but he knows so much about the game. Look at him. He looks like a traffic cop. You usually think of a point guard directing your offense, but there's Ferry. Now, once he gets everybody where he wants them, just working like crazy for position. The fake, now the turnaround jump shot. Can we go again here now? You want to pass the ball? There you go. There's Oliver dropping down to try to cover him, but he doesn't dribble it there. Bricky cuts to the basket. He throws him the ball. That's the kind of a package that has professional scouts drooling. The athletic skills, the shooting ability, and the basketball intelligence that he has are phenomenal. Eight assists for Danny Ferry. He's working on a triple-double. 67-46. Morgan guarded by Smith. Gives up several inches in height. They go inside Ferry with a block. And out of bounds to Virginia. You know, when you look at Danny Ferry, you've got to talk about with the year that he's having, 
one of the most complete players not only this year in college basketball but you have got to start talking about him in terms of the great players in college basketball sure do and I've seen Danny Ferry play as you have many many times in the last four years I don't think I've ever seen him do anything outrageous or spectacular he's just excellent all the time Smith with a steal he can't turn over or it's it is a turnover he doesn't and gets it to Henderson that's really good discipline by John Smith to just sit there you roll it all it's an automatic travel call Leitner nice job by Daniel to make the interception Morgan on the line Richard Morgan two out of seven what a rebound to Daniel well, he just wanted it more than anyone else and Henderson went down Henderson got tangled up with Daniel there on that rebound Daniel really swung down hard and knocked somebody down and the person he knocked down was Henderson Virginia obviously hasn't quit in this ball game and what happened to Henderson is he just landed square on his back I guess that he has the wind knocked out of him Daniel at 6'9", 213, Henderson 6'4", 170. Phil is not going to win many of those battles for the ball. It's a big-time rebound. Daniel. Henderson is up, gets a nice hand. And Danny Ferry comes out to escort him off the court. Not only does he land just square on his back, just the kind of thing that blows all the wind out of you, but then his head is going to bounce on the floor oh. right there. Phil looks like he's going to be fine. They will not take him to the locker room. Well, it's easy for you to say. <laughs> yeah, he'll, uh, that's a, that's a two buffer and headache, isn't it? 67-48. Duke on top by 19. Time becoming a factor with a lead this big. 10-34 to go. Ferry. And it's 21-point lead, and Danny Ferry has 20. For Virginia to come back in the game, Ferry's like got to break a leg or something. Richard Morgan. Morgan is just ice cold after hitting his first two of the second half. He is three for 17 from the floor tonight. Duke continues to do a real good job defensively against Richard Morgan. Virginia not able to set any screens for him to get him open. There's Ferry again. I think you can warm up the bus at 71-48. The Cavaliers with the six-game winning streak coming in here, but they had not won in this building since December of 82, and it doesn't look like tonight's going to be their night either. Fouls on Robert Bricky, his fourth. Fouls on Bricky, his fourth. Coming up Monday, what a showdown. Syracuse and Georgetown in the Big East starts at 7.30, but at 9.30, the second half of the Big East, or the... Uh, Big Monday doubleheader. Ohio State going against number one Iowa and will cap it off at midnight Eastern time with Utah State against UC Santa Barbara. Stiff working on John Smith. And here Duke showing 2-3 zone. That's guaranteed to bat for you when Duke goes through zone. Well, Morgan's not in there. Stiff missed the shot. Leitner knocked it out of bounds. I'm sure Richard Morgan is sitting on the bench drooling. No, there he is. Oh, that's all right. He may be drooling, but he's I, running around. I, I apologize. Drooling. Returns to the Cavalier lineup. Figured against a 2 3 zone, he'd light up like a Christmas tree. Well, again, what you have is that Virginia's been struggling against this man to man the whole game. Duke with the huge lead. They go to the zone to force Virginia to pass the ball around a little bit and run time off the clock. Oliver, they get it to Stiff. May have been partially blocked by Leitner. Follow goes over the backboard, out of bounds. Duke's ball. It's now that cannot be Duke's ball right there because I thought that Duke shot blocked was blocked. It. So right. if it's a blocked shot, then it has to be off. And a good job of officiating by Lenny Wirtz and Paul Houseman. Now right there, there's the blocked shot. So the last person that touches the ball is Brian Davis. And that's a good call right there. Virginia's going to get the ball. It's been a very well officiated ball game. They have maintained control of this. Morgan fakes, trying to get Ferry to follow him, and he does. 
It's only two on Danny Ferris. But the cumulative effect of all that, Bricky just fouled Morgan a couple of minutes ago. Now Ferry gets him. But the cumulative effect is that the Duke pressure is just all over Virginia. Even though Morgan's going to go to the line for a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, Duke's strategy has obviously been very successful. All the pressure on Morgan has really forced him off his game. And so it's okay if he's going to the line. Mike Krzyzewski has to be very happy with a 23-point lead with nine minutes to go. And Mike Krzyzewski, I think, came up with a great game plan to show down, slow down Virginia's running game tonight, Dan. That has something that has concerned coaches all around the league. What are you going to do? And this guy right there, one of the very, very best defensive coaches in the country, came up with a wrinkle by using Danny Ferry. You know, what a great idea. It's just it takes something very simple. In other words, that the guy who throws the ball inbounds is usually a big guy, and he's going to jog up the court to have Ferry guard him and double team on the way up. Obviously open to just about any idea that has a chance to work. The worst year Krzyzewski has had in the last six years is 23 and 8. He has done a brilliant coaching job here. Under nine minutes, 8.50 and counting. Davis had the open shot and passed on it to Quinn Snyder. They'd like to work some time off the clock, shorten the game. Smith pull up from the baseline. Stripped, and here come the Cavaliers. Oliver in the middle. Got it back. Forces it up and made it. That's the kind of shot that Virginia's been getting all night. A tough shot under tough pressure, and so it's not surprising that you're down in the ballgame by 19. First two points for Oliver. Crotty is set to come back in the game. Foul trouble is not going to hurt Duke. Not with this lead and not with their bench. And not with the fact that about any time they want to, they can just wait till they get the ferry open. They had him open that time, couldn't hit him. Morgan still having trouble finding a shot, has to lean into another tough one and missed it. Morgan has really started to stand around a little bit on offense, I think, Mike. Early in the ball game, at least in the first half, he's continued to move through. He may be getting tired. He also may be getting a little bit frustrated. He's not used to this kind of night. Nearing the top of the ACC scoring ladder, more than 21 points a game. Here's a foul away from the ball, pointing at Leitner. His second. Chris Hill and Quinn Snyder, he didn't do it. I didn't do anything. I was just standing there. Just, my arms were my side. Uh, and I, maybe I said something. I don't know. I was thinking about chemistry class tomorrow. <laughs> Richard Morgan going to go out. Dirk Castro going to come in. Castro out of Stillwell, Kansas, 6'6", sophomore in for the first time. He's another guy who can shoot the basketball. Got some range. Number 44, Jeff. Really what Virginia needs right now is a bunch of three-pointers. Daniel will go to the line. Excellent free throw shooter. Outside of Dan Bonner, I don't remember too many big guys that shoot 84% <laughs> from the line. That's what you shot, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. and that's going to be a lane violation. Curtis Williams stepped in. It's been a nightmare for Virginia. And 7.26 to go in Freddie's latest, 71-53. Norm, when explosive Oklahoma takes on the Missouri Tigers. Then North Carolina faces ACC rival NC State. Thursday night at 7 Eastern, live on ESPN. Duke leads by 18. I must tell our viewers, Dan Bonner is not always this 100% <laughs> correct, but you are tonight on your keys to win. Richard Morgan, only 3 of 18. You get a look at Richard sitting on the bench right there. He's got 13 points tonight for 3 of 18 from the field. Virginia just can't afford that. For the Duke Blue Devils, we talked about how they had to support Danny Ferry, particularly the inside people, and they have done that about as well as Mike Krzyzewski could possibly expect. There you see Al Bonabi with 10 right down the list there. In addition to that, Snyder's got nine, Henderson's got nine. And Duke just milking the clock at this point. 7.17 to go, they're up by 18 points. And Henderson pushed by Crotty. That will be number five for John Crotty. 
He fouls out with 7-11 to go in the game. Right now, let's check in with Tim Brando. Thank you, Mike, and your game, Duke leading handily, but at Allen Fieldhouse in the Big 8, Oklahoma State and Kansas, and a wild one down just over a minute to play, a four-point lead for the Cowboys, John Paul Della Cameron, and Irv Brown with a call. It's a 79-75 lead, Oklahoma State by four with a minute 11 to go in the game, and Kevin Pritchard's foul will put the Oklahoma State Cowboys in the bonus situation on Pritchard's second personal foul. And I think the strategy is good. You've got to get the clock stopped. Oklahoma State will go the line. Let's pick it up here. Pritchard playing with that bad leg. Boy, it hadn't bothered him. He just guts it out. There's a call by Bill Westbrook. Going to make him hit at the free throw line. And that's an important free throw made by Corey Williams. But you got to follow him. Roy Williams knows that. Jimmy Balbano won a national championship doing that. You let a good ball handling team, and we've seen their guard strike run out the clock. You've got no shot. And Oklahoma State on the verge of their first road victory of the season. They lead it again by six with a minute four to go. Driving baseline. Pritchard was blocked. And Atea, he smacked his head hard in the court as he landed. Oh, We're going to give the ball the other way, but Atea, that had a sting. Pick it up. Pritchard with the explosion has to have it, takes it to the hole, makes the officials make the call. The call is correct. It was a good block. And look at that effort. So he really with, banged himself hard off those off the floor. 59 anyway. seconds left. You got to follow him, John Paul, right now. Well, they're not doing it right out of Williams. Pritchard now that time went in for the steal and got him. And that's going to be his third foul. Third on Kevin Pritchard. A gutsy performance, as you mentioned, for Pritchard, just to even play in this game with that Achilles tendon problem. This young team has been terrific, and nobody has been any better than their guards. They have done a sensational job. Hamilton with a victory. His team now moves to 14-6 and six overall. More importantly, 5-2 and two in the Big 8 Conference. Amazingly, Kansas now in four tries to pick up their 1,400th career win. Don't get it done at the Allen Fieldhouse. They fall to 3-5 and five in the Big 8 and 16 and 7 overall so it's been a rough uh, 10 days for roy williams and company all right so they get the victory we'll be taking you back out to cameron indoor stadium in just a few moments and we'll also have some news relative to the final four as well as some top 20 scores all of that coming up as we continue with our ncaa basketball doubleheader and bonus coverage tonight on espn stay with us we'll be back Thank you, Tim. Back in Durham. 2.53 left. An 18-point game. Ball out of bounds for Virginia. And, Dan, while we were away at the Kansas game, it was so much Danny Ferry put on a clinic at both ends of the court. Virginia would wish that Danny Ferry was away somewhere at any place other than here. But this is this is with the 45-second shot clock running out. He lets that ball go just as the 45-second clock runs out. Of course, Ferry just doesn't do it on the offensive end of the court. This is the very next time that Virginia has the ball. He steps in front and steals it. And then tells Abdel Nabi to look for Quinn Snyder. <laughs> Oliver, played a pretty good second half, gets his own rebound. That's a good experience for Oliver. Prady, of course, with the foul trouble, so Oliver gets to come in and play against Duke at Duke. Here's a foul away from the ball, called on Stiff for pushing. Foul was on number 20, Brian Stiff is third. Take a look at the uh, remaining schedule the Cavaliers have. As you mentioned earlier, you've got to wipe this thing out of their mind and get on with business. It doesn't get any easier. No, and you notice all those acts there before the team, They're before their opponents. They really got to go on the road a lot. And as we said, a lot of people, both within and from outside the Virginia John program, Smith were saying, well, we'll see how good these guys are. And by these guys, we mean the Virginia Cavaliers to get a look at the bench there. Sort of putting a lot of pressure on the team about tonight's game, and they have come in here and just not played very well at all. Their six-game losing streak is going to be a memory, but one thing in Virginia's favor, Terry Holland and his coaching staff, as you see uh, Dave, Dave Odom, Odom, who handled the club in uh, Terry's absence with the surgery, uh, they have been overachievers, no doubt about it. Another free throw. Number 20. 79 61. Confidence is such an important part of this basketball game. Davis comes in. John Smith comes out to a big hand. Smith had a good ball game tonight. 
Wait till you hear the hands for Danny Perry. Now to use hands and feet. Snyder going for the steal against Oliver. Blocked from behind. Ahead to Snyder. And Quinn Snyder shows you some leaping ability. 11, one of one, two, three, four, five men is up at play 24. Castro with the three-pointer. And during their winning streak, that's been Virginia's M.O. to have four or five guys in double figures. Duke just doing a marvelous job on both ends of the court tonight. And they only had two tonight, Dan. Crotty with 10 and Morgan with 13. That's half of what Morgan's been doing during the streak. Leitner gets a jam. Give Leitner eight. Looking for Castro for the three. Perry with another rebound. Mike Krzyzewski waiting for a dead ball situation. He's had the rest of his bench waiting at the sideline for about a minute and a half. Hasn't been able to get him in the game. And Mike, you mentioned it before. Now Duke is going to get a timeout. But you mentioned it before. Just a great game plan by Mike Krzyzewski and his coaching staff. 104 left. It's a 19-point lead for the Blue Devils. Durham, North Carolina, and the bottom line for both of these ball clubs. Richard Morgan, the Cavaliers' leading scorer, had a horrid night from the field, only three out of 18. And Danny Ferry had a brilliant night for Duke. 24 points, six rebounds, nine assists. Ferry with a big smile with 104 left. He's been taken out of the ballgame to a great hand. Coming up after our game, Scholastic Sports America, followed by Sports Center. Hope you'll stay tuned for that. Mike, not only did Ferry have that big game, the 24 points, six rebounds, nine assists, but he's got four of his teammates in double figures as well. Down to a minute to go, a 19-point lead. This one has been over for quite a while, and a great performance by Duke. Mike Krzyzewski has cleared his bench. That's Clay Buckley, the sophomore from Wayne, Pennsylvania. He gets his first two. Virginia was averaging well up in the 80s in point production. They have only 64 tonight. London fouled on the way up, and the reach-in foul committed by Leitner, his third. Fouls on pitch number 32, Christian Leitner, his third. Dan, it's not going to be an easy road for Duke after losing those four ACC games. They still have some tough ones left. The advantage is they've got three of the five at home. And, of course, they always close out the schedule against North Carolina. North Carolina beat them here. And Kansas and Arizona out of conference. So all the critics who said Duke didn't play anybody early, well, they got them late. Mike, we talked about tempo in games where Virginia this year where they've scored 80 points or more, they're 10 and 1. In games where they've scored 70 or less, they're 2 and 4. And unless they do some couple of, score a couple of baskets here, they're going to be 2 and 5 in that department. But one thing's for sure, they're going to be 13 and 7 overall. Yes. Here's the steal. The Cavaliers on the run with 14 seconds to go in the game. Oliver. Doesn't get the roll. Back the other way, Brian Davis. At the buzzer, it won't go. But Duke has been very impressive, knocking off Virginia. 85-66 in Durham. For Dan Bonner and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching. Let's join our programming at Bristol with Tim Brent. <laughs> All right, Mike, thank you very much. It's good to have you back with us. 85-66 the final. A couple of blowouts tonight in college basketball on ESPN, although we did have a pretty good one from Lawrence, Kansas.